Okay, so sometimes people ask for help with files. This came in, his client had sent him this model of a piece of steel that he needs to recreate. But the bend lines are wrong for his die sets. He needs to redo this bend line. I have cut down the original model to give me a sample of the piece that I need. I can see that it's a flat edge, so it's what they call not normal two at the bottom, or not a normal cut, so we have to rectify that. The radii of the actual cuts themselves seem to also be off, so we need to modify that. And the last thing we want to do is make an actual flat pattern so it can be cut and machined as required. All right, so we're not talking something that's very big. It is roughly 500 millimeters long. It is made from, what are we talking, 3.33 steel. So it's coming from America. So they're using gauge tables, etc. We'll be converting them into our millimeter standards and they can convert them back when it goes back to the, the user. The first thing I'm looking at, this was sent to me as a step file. So I isolated the section that I needed, saved it out as a body, and then brought it back in to a part document in SOLIDWORKS. Now I'm going to dissect it to give me my curvature angles and my basic building blocks to build the file once again. The file came in, put it in, no issue. I then took a plane and I took it from the very base. So I was looking for the flat bottom. Took a plane from that, raised it, at uh, 90 degrees to my base to give me my front. Then I took the sketch from the front inner, so it gave me my distance and my angle. I then took another plane on the end, but my issue with my plane on the end is because there's an outer cut here, etc., it was going to be hard to pinpoint the location that I needed. So I left that plane and I went to the next one, which I had split down the center because I wanted to be able to get a perpendicular center line the whole way along. Didn't draw a sketch, I actually only drew a line. Of that line, came out 150 millimeters and 300 millimeters. So you can see that I drew a line that is parallel to the, the center of this line. So this is on the pitch of the first sketch. If I turn on my first sketch, you'll see it's at the pitch of the first sketch and it travels the very same parallel direction as the point on the curve. So it gives me parallel the whole way up along. And it's projecting that point, which as you can see is the angle, up. Then I took test samples. I took 150 millimeter and I cut down from the line down to the base and 300 millimeters and I cut from the line down to the base. So they get, give me my two test samples. So if I close that sketch and go to my final sketch on this part, I drew across the bottom. And I took two test samples at 150 and 300. We're going inner line. Because if you look at your normal two cut, it's going to be at a perpendicular to that point there. Then when we turn one sketch on top of the other, you can see I have my sample across, have my sample up. My sample across, my sample up. And that gave me three sketches of that angle at zero, 150 millimeters away and 300 millimeters away. Do I need to do one, two, three profiles? No, because it's a flat section folded. I actually only need to do two profiles. One profile is only checking the other profile. That's why one is 150 and the other is 300. We took this sample piece and we split it into two cross sections and an end profile. And that will give us the profile of how to make the full piece, no matter what length um, it's traveling. So it gives us 
the actual angles and everything that is required. Now, what I done next was I looked at this piece and I said, how am I going to make this out of sheet metal? And straight away, what jumped into mind was lofted bend. Another one that jumped to mind though was the sketch bend. Okay, so I went and looked at my sketch bend. When I set it out, I set out my profile. So I have my initial triangle, my first sketch, which I knew was 60 degrees triangle. And I knew the bottom of that triangle was 23.48. I set up a sketch on my right plane with its origin at my origin point. Fully defined that sketch. 60 degrees, 23.48. Close it. Okay, so that was the starting point. My next one, I took my 300. I know I had taken a piece that was 150 out also, but I took another cross section at 100 and I measured back 100 millimeters and I increased my sizes and kept my angle. That worked as my second sketch. My third sketch was from the top view and I drew out two construction lines from starting at this point and then I catch the point on this one as well. So that gave me what way the shape would look as the lines travel out. Added in another plane that was 300 millimeters and just left that as a floating measurement. So all it is, it's just dictated by these two lines and that center line. Plane three, I took from that side. So I used my center here and my center here Join them together with a plane. So something lying flat on that plane. The model that I had originally got the profiles from, there was something wrong that the two sides weren't on the same plane. So I had to adjust or make minute adjustments to get it to line up correctly. Added a base flange. How I added my base flange was took that top line put it in as a construction line and mirrored my flange across. So how I originally got the flange is I had this line and this line, that line and that line. So you can see the way it's set up there. Closed. Then I drew a uh, solid line from middle to middle. bent it over at 90 degrees, made my flat pattern. If you look at this, it is wrong. If you look at the bottom, that line perfectly connects to the bottom of the object. Turn it around. This line is short. Doesn't connect down. Tried a few different ways of achieving the result. Seems to always be short. Now, there's a ratio of shortness between this point and this point. So it's on the loss somewhere on the line. Now, I could add more material to fill that back in and everything will be good that way. But I thought that that was a bit more, um, it's adding more commands and it's just messier. Be all right if you're doing it for a once, one-off object. But I wanted something that I could use over and over again. Next attempt was what I originally had taught, which was my loft of bend. Set up the same thing all the way along again, put in my two profiles and put in my loft of bend. There's two options here, bent and formed. This one is formed, I think. And I used a cord. Technically it's right, but it wasn't what I was really looking for either. So I closed it off. Next one I built was this one. So now I'm only exploring. I didn't go majorly into it. This one's the very same process, except I've named my sketches. So I have my sketch adjustment plane, which is 100 millimeters away from the front. If I want to adjust anything on my sketch to make the profile different, I can. My sketch adjustment put up a bigger height here or change my angle. 
my height direction I have put down this line and put it two meters away if you needed to see the difference in your profile from the first 100 millimeters to the, to the next 1900 millimeters you can this is the way that's going to travel my width distance is the bottom two my length plane so I can set it at whatever length I want it to so if this plane was back further so say if it was 500 millimeters just rebuild it adds now it will add as far as these lengths so it can make a piece that is 2000 millimeters long if we go back to our length plane we can cut that back to 300 millimeters that lands a pack there what i had used to achieve the whole thing was a lofted bend my initial thought i used my small sketch bigger sketch put it together put in a very small face value and sheet metal parameters this person wants to change the radii and also might want to change the thickness of the steel sheet metal parameters there's the radii there's the thickness and I've added a K factor here as well. Or if they wanted to use the steel gauge tables, etc. What was hard about this actual component? The only thing I needed was the actual original sketches. So it all relied solely on my first file, which was my sample shape, and taking accurate measurements of everything that was there. When I got it out to the other point, and had it as my leg shape of my lofted bend the only issue i had was that there's too many curves on it so i was i wanted one direct fold rather than multiple folds my sketch bend the filler was wrong here now there could be setting out there that someone knows to allow that to fill back but for me i just moved on again because my original thought on how to achieve this was a lofted bend Back to our sample again, into our lofted bend, and there is our lofted bend. That's how to automate uh, a part in SOLIDWORKS just to extend its length, and how to take the information from an STL file and build it back out into a section. Okay, so the next time I will probably put up a video on how to automate that with a design table. So that you can put in the length that you want the piece and SOLIDWORKS will automatically generate that piece for you. Uh, till next time.